So here at the FA, we define skill as creating and solving game problems. I'd just be really interested to hear how you describe a skillful moment. Yeah, uh, I described it similar. Um, so what happens on the field, uh, a player just reads the game, uh, scans, has then uh, quick thinking, hopefully, and makes a decision and trying to execute um, a football action. And hopefully that's in position, out position or in transition. And hopefully that will be successful. Can you talk us through some um, strategies that you have on the pitch with players to help them to become more skillful? Well, first of all, I'm trying to connect with players. Um, so you can, uh, when you connect, you start a conversation, you, you learn more about each other. Uh, then you have a, a football plan and from out this football plan, you start your strategies and also your training sessions. And then we go on the pitch and what we hope is that when we have our plan and we all agree on it, there's lots of involvement and commitment and that then players um, start to, um, to work on that and taking responsibility for their actions uh, and get more and more independent from a coach. Or when you go play a game, it's clear. Uh, you train, you know the plan, you know how we want to execute, you know your task, your individual task, but also as a line and as a team. And then um, yeah, go on the pitch and take, make your own choices and accept uh, mistakes. So it sounds like creating the right environment for learning is key. Uh, yes, that's where it all starts with, creating an environment in which there's trust uh, and it's safe. So in terms of getting to know the players, because you speak about connecting quite often in terms of people connecting with each other in the environment. So can you give us a little bit more insight into how coaches might develop connection between players and between coaches? Yeah, let's start with talking with each other and uh, asking questions uh, on and off the pitch, just asking questions and also tell a little bit about yourself. Um, and then you learn about players and every player well, every, every human being is different. So it's good to learn about each other so you can also adapt uh, your approach to the player to get more out of her. It's all about performing, uh, performing at the highest level you can. Um, and, and then of course it comes on the pitch and you have to execute, but I work with the most talented players of England. So um, yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> Gemma mentioned earlier the idea of um, players understanding their strengths, what they bring, but also recognising what the opponent brings mm -hmm. on the pitch. And I wonder if that's part of the connection at times? Yes, absolutely. It's, um, yeah, you have to know each other, uh, also to understand each other better, and also to, to, to give feedback to each other, because when you, then you create an environment, and what I said, which is safe, and we need, at the level we play, but I think everywhere, you want to give feedback to each other, because you want to become better every day. And if you don't give honest feedback, how can you become better? What advice would you give coaches to develop skill? Um, well, first of all, um, uh, younger players coming in and the time has changed. When I was young, I uh, you know, came from a total different environment. Uh, it, I think now when players come into uh, uh, the senior women's team, they have had a, um, a better education than I had at the time, so they're more aware. But I think younger players are not aware of situations yet. As much as experienced players, you need experience to know what's going to happen. And I think when you think all about what can you expect in the match, what can you expect out of the pitch, I think that's what we really need to help players with. And how can you um, cope with that? I think that's what we could uh, help them in. But I think you can help any, uh, any player in. Um, but still look at the player, who, who do you have in front of you and what type and what experience does this player have, does that player have, and then um, adapt to that player. And I think um, the most important thing also is that you have to take action and continuously learn, okay, what's my task? How can I have a contribution to the performance of the team that also makes that I perform better? Um, and then, but then the player needs to know what her task is. So you need to talk about that and also asking feedback to, to, to check also, ask, ask a lot of questions and to check if the player understands what we are talking about together and then get that implemented in the team again. I can already get a feel for your approach towards working with players just through having this conversation. 
um, which is reflective in your behaviours. So what behaviours would you suggest are helpful for players when they're trying to demonstrate skill? What you need to um, um, empower is just take action and make mistakes. You, no one wants to make a mistake, but if you don't take action, you're never going to do something really good. Um, but you can also make a mistake. That's just part of life and also part of football. Um, that's what I also always say. And then from your mistakes, you can learn. But if you don't take action, what are you going to talk about? So uh, that, I think as a coach, you should also always say, stay calm uh, because uh, you lead by example too. And I think when you, when you want to make players more independent and taking responsibility for their own actions, you just need to be calm um, and don't tell them all the time what to do in the moment. You know, in the review you discuss, you ask questions again, uh, because when you ask questions, you get a discussion, it becomes our discussion, and then you learn a lot more than when I just tell them literally what they have to do all the time. So I think that really helps too. And I think what's also very important is you have your goal, everyone wants to win the game. Football is about scoring one goal more than the other one, or you hope to score more, but that's what the game is about. So it's about winning. But when you're coaching, always be proud of players who are doing their best uh, and take action and coach in the now and the action and not in the result. Suppose for less experienced or younger players and in, for coaches who don't have video, they can still promote these ideas in their training sessions through good questioning. Good questioning and sometimes just uh, simulate situations. You have this and, and just put players in that situation so they can still feel a little bit. You can also um, challenge them to watch TV uh, or YouTube and watch clips from other players in their position uh, or send them little clips. Uh, did you see this? Or the, and talk about it. When you don't talk about it, you, you, that's where the awareness comes from. Um, so many things that you can do and well, you, can, you, you always get back, you always receive very nice response from players because then they also feel that you care about them, that you want to help them in their development. On the pitch when coaches might be asking these open questions to provoke reflection, I suppose there's a careful balance between not interrupting the play too often to ask lots and lots of questions and making sure if you do that it's well timed. Yeah, kids start playing football because they love football. So they have to play football. So first of all, stay very close to the game. Uh, don't make it too hard. Just play the game, small sided games or, or just little overload, underload games. That's where it starts with. And you have so many other things. But I think stay close to the game in your practice is really essential. Uh, and that gives them fun too. And I think fun, especially when you start as a player, but also when you're an adult, uh, people love the game. So you have to play the game a lot. And sometimes at our level, of course, you have to do some tactical training sessions too, but find balance in that. Not too much because you play the game. And when you tell, well, sometimes this is now tactical. So we're walking through some, some moments and they know, and then we start playing. When we play a game or small sided games, I'm not going to stop it because then it takes the rhythm out of the practice. So it's always finding balance, uh, rhythm, uh, joy, tactical, uh, technical, physical, which you cannot ever see separately. It's all one because when you play a small-sided game, that's intense already.